Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Father, visit me by your word. In the name of Jesus. Keep praying everywhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just one prayer point and then we'll sit down. The grace to see. The grace to see. Lord, the grace to see. The grace to see. Lift your voice and pray. The grace to see. The grace to see. Habalonda Shabrates Kebadagatush, Ibragadosha La Hasanaba Katuprakadosh, Terebodus, Ebrandiga Dabanadabash, Ebragadagata Barakata Bakatosh, Shabrandagata Nadabash, Shadagata Bragada. The grace to see, the grace to see, the grace to see, the grace to see. Take away the veil, O oh God, from my eyes. Grant me the grace to see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are still going to pray that prayer. There is truly a grace that can cause the eyes of a man to see. Isaiah 29, verse 11 and 12. There is no amount of education or natural enlightenment that can replace light, spiritual light. The Bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit and it tells you the reason because they are spiritually discerned. It says, and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned say, read this I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot. Why? For it is sealed. Next verse. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. That means there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned cannot help themselves. No matter what earthly advantage you have, there are dimensions where it is only the Spirit of God. Chapter 32 and verse 8 of Job. Elihu was speaking, he says, But there is a Spirit. Not in heaven, in man. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration, the word there is breath. Breath. It doesn't just mean vision, the breath. There is no motivation that gives illumination. It takes the breathing of the spirit. Can give men understanding. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. That all these spirits, when they rest upon you, go to verse 3. They are all for one purpose. And he shall make him of quick understanding. That means there is timing matters in your knowing the things of God. Of quick understanding. Of quick understanding. Of quick understanding. Lift your voice and say, Lord, light my candle. Light my candle. Neither do men light a lamp. That's the secret. Not neither do men have a lamp. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Shibarakaduza bragadias. 
Light my candle, O oh God. Light my candle. Open my eyes to see. Hallelujah. Job chapter 29. We're going to come shortly. Job was a very, very strange man. We're reading from verse 1 to 4. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, we're reading to 4, but that I were in the months past, in the days when God prayed me, uh -huh, when his candle shined upon my head, now, think, just don't rush. When his what? Candle shined upon my head. That God will shine a candle upon a man's head. And when by his light, not my light, by his light, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. When by his light I walk through darkness, for as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. This was the basis of his results. The Lord shined his candle upon my head. Then the Lord used his light and said, walk through your darkness. Use my light. And then he kept his secrets on my tabernacle. Like you go to your library and you find a book called the secrets of God. You can now begin to read all the exploits that happen. Light, secrets, light, secrets, light. Let me tell you the truth. There are things that are not public. God must come to you and show you. Ephesians chapter 1. Let me show you something and then we'll sit down. Ephesians chapter 1. Mighty God of heaven. From verse eight, wherein he had abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he may gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in the earth, all in him. It says, in whom we have also obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Yeah, this is it. Please, let's go to chapter 3. It just came to my spirit and I thought to share it with us. Verse 2. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, meaning for your sake, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote aforetime in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Now the verse that I've been looking for is in verse 5. Read with me please. One, two, read. Which in other ages. That means that there are truths that in other ages were not known. He says... As it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. It is not every mystery we share now 
that was known in time past. The Holy Spirit has not stopped revealing. Just like he has not stopped creation. The Bible says in Revelations, there were times John saw some things. He said, seal it. Close this one. It is not for this time. One prayer. The mystery for this season. Oh God, let me see it. The secret of the Lord that makes for exploits in this season. Not just in time past. What the Spirit is saying. Saying. Which in time past was not known. But in these last days that he revealed to us by his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The mystery for the season, oh God. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Let's pay attention. We'll rise up and pray just to exhort our hearts. When Jesus began to teach about the Holy Spirit, among the many things, please settle down, among the many things he said, the Holy Spirit will show you things to come, not just things that are happening. That means you will own the future by having access, knowledge and light of the things that will be useful in the future. The Holy Spirit, He will show you. Not just that He will take things that are mine. That is already spectacular. But He says, He will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. Things to come. Let me tell you, the things that God is, the knowledge that He is bringing, please listen. These are not necessarily the things that will only benefit us now. They are the keys and the patterns that will give us access to the future. Praise the Lord. Father, we bless you and we pray that the entrance of your word will give light and will give understanding to the simple in the name of Jesus. I pray like never before that what I'm about to share and exhort us on that finally someone will get this thing. And that in the name of Jesus Christ, as you get it, you will rise like an edifice unhindered. You know your time has come, not just by the prophecy that comes. You know your time has come. The light comes to you. When light does not come, no matter who prophesies, your time has not come. You will rise and shine, not because of prophecy. Prophecy informs you so you can receive your faith. You can release your faith to receive that which is meant for you. But it's going to take light. To... Hallelujah. The law of honor. This is one of the deepest spiritual mysteries. It is one of the most powerful spiritual laws I know. Second only to the law of encounter. No matter what laws you know in the spirit, if you do not know this, you will never rise. The law of honor. Pay attention, we will listen, and then we will pray. Teach us your ways, O oh God. Make our lives easy by the wisdom that comes in knowing your ways. In the name of Jesus, take away struggles, take away hardship from our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Very, very powerful. I will continue to teach us again and again that this kingdom is a kingdom of mysteries. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. We don't reign just by goodwill. Don't reign just by good intention. Having a sincere desire is not enough to reign. Just being a kind and a nice person is not even enough to reign. There are many kind and wonderful people who are victims of situations and circumstances. 
it will take light everybody say light you see let me tell you this as god reveals these principles don't just write them on a jotter write them upon the tablet of your heart that if they ask you tomorrow what are the secrets of the kingdom you know you can bring them out i may not know this and this but by god's grace i know this one and i know this one they are irrefutable principles backed up by god's own integrity there is no man there is no policy there is no civilization that will change or corrupt the immutability of these truths it is true believe me when i tell you and god has granted me access by his grace to certain mysteries and principles of all of them i will continue to tell you second only to the law of encounter this is the greatest in terms of value the laws are all powerful and they have their place but they are not equally powerful hallelujah the law of honor the mystery behind very strange open doors the mystery behind the unstoppable lifting and the rising of people the mystery that can in one day end captivity this is the mother that gives birth to favor favor is at the mercy of this knowledge hallelujah two scriptures one first samuel chapter 2 please and verse 30 first samuel chapter 2 and 30 wherefore the lord god of israel said i said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever but now the lord said be it far from me for them that honor me i will honor and they that despise me i will lightly esteem that means trivialize this is god speaking them that honor me i will honor but they that despise me i will lightly esteem the kingdom works based on seed time and harvest that means that there is always a seed every result that we obtain in the kingdom can be likened to a harvest please understand what i'm teaching you i want you to get this law that it is turned right when you call every result that you obtain in the kingdom a harvest whether it is healing whether it is deliverance whether it is prosperity whether it is fresh grace activation of the gifts of the spirit whatever dimension it can be called a harvest and that for every harvest there is a seed everybody say seed please say it again seed the bible tells us in genesis chapter 8 and verse 22 when Abraham read an offering that was well pleasing unto god the lord came and made certain vows backed up by his own integrity and he says as far as the earth remains he says see time and harvest then he lists all the others shall not cease that means for every harvest you desire you start your journey to actualizing that harvest by knowing what seed produces it are we together now not every seed produces everything there are seeds and harvests that are allocated for those seeds are we together now very very important for instance attention and listening is the seed for learning if you want to learn a harvest knowledge the seed that you sow is your attention my son pay attention not just listen pay attention so attention is a seed and that when you pay attention to anything the harvest that comes is that you will learn about it are we together knowledge 
in itself is a seed for change or transformation. You are not transformed by desire. You are not changed just by intention. It will take nothing for any change and any transformation to happen. There are seeds. Very, very important. Time is the seed for destiny. There is no destiny without time. Please listen. When God wants to give you a destiny, He gives you a seed of time. The way you sow that time will determine the kind of destiny that you will have. That a man's destiny is a multiplication of the seeds of the time. Are you seeing why time is important? That whatever tries to fight your time is not really, really fighting your time. It's fighting your destiny. Because your time is the seed for your destiny. Appearance, for instance, is not only the seed for acceptance, it is the seed for perception. Appearance does not just talk about the clothes you wear alone. Appearance is the seed for acceptance. It is also the seed for perception. That means I am at liberty to perceive things about your life based on your appearance. If I see a mecca with a white um, lab coat and apron and a stethoscope, I can perceive that based on that appearance, I can't call him a carpenter. That is not the appearance of a carpenter. Are we together now? That means that if I can change your perception by changing my appearance. It's very, very powerful. I'm showing you seeds and the harvest that come. Words, words are the seeds that carve intentions and thoughts. Words. You use words to paint an intention from you to someone. That means if I want to transfer what is in my heart to you, the seed I will sow is words. If I don't speak right, I can create a harvest in you that was not what I intended. I'm showing you how these things play. Are we together now? Battle is the seed for territory. Every time you want the harvest of a territory, the seed you sow is battle. There is no access to a territory without battle. Are we together? Friendship is the seed for relationship. That he who wants friends must first show himself. You must sow that seed of friendship. This is very, very, very powerful. Prayer and fasting are the seeds for both personal and corporate revival. It's, it's all through scripture. That every time you really want to see revival, no matter what else you add to the table, if there is no prayer and fasting, you just added fertilizers without a seed. The seed for revival, both personal and corporate, is prayer and fasting. Honor is the seed for access. Please write it down. Honor. Don't assume you have heard what I've said. Don't assume I've taught it so many times. Just listen very carefully. Honor is the seed for access. That means dishonor is also a seed. And there is a harvest that dishonor brings. Dishonor is the key to barriers. The harvest that dishonor brings is a barrier on your way. This is powerful. Many of the breakthroughs we seek in life will come at the instance of the access that we have. And I'm teaching you that in the realm of the spirit, that every time there is a limitation standing before you, then there is a dimension of this law that you must engage. Otherwise you will remain there. If you are with me, say Amen. All failures can be traced to dishonor. 
all without exception all failures in your life and my life can be traced to dishonor a threefold dimension of dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to spiritual principles all failure can be directly traced to dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles are we together what then is honor please write this down generally honor talks of esteem esteeming a person or a thing but let me give you a definition that i've used and i've found very valuable honor is the discerning please write the discerning true honor starts from discernment the celebration and the rewarding of excellence of usefulness of value honor is the discerning the celebration the rewarding of excellence from the word excel of usefulness and of value that means that you have please come you have the fortitude to honor first to the degree to which you can discern it's a spiritual perception that you must have the ability to discern value the ability to discern excellence the word excellence means the fortitude to surpass standards are we together now the ability to discern the use of a person or a thing either to your life or a system is called honor please listen very carefully that means dishonor on the other hand means trivializing importance dishonor means trivializing value trivializing usefulness trivializing a system a principle a person please write this i'm so glad that we're learning this even as we prepare for the business session tomorrow i believe it's going to be a very powerful time please pay attention listen dishonor means to take things or people for granted dishonor means to lightly esteem In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20, the Bible tells us there are certain vessels that are unto dishonor. That are unto dishonor. They are vessels, but they are unto or for dishonor. That means a vessel unto honor or a vessel unto dishonor. Is someone learning something here? It is the key to all kinds of access the moment a door closes the key that opens it will be honor to god or honor to men or honor to principles or a combination of all of them are you getting what i'm saying now this is very very powerful and i'm teaching this because many people in our generation do not know that reason why a person can mark time at a realm spiritually, in ministry, in business, in family, and so on and so forth. Because of one word, dishonor. Dishonor is such a serious thing to God and honor is such a serious thing that the entire Old Testament was a system of creating honor. Listen very carefully, believers. I preached a message years ago called Commanding Results. And that was the first time I began to talk about honor. And I have watched this Lord change people's lives. I've watched it change my own life. And I want you to hold on to this Lord tonight like a ladder. And let me see the devil that will stop you from rising. Honor. Very, very powerful. The Bible lets us know that honor is required for success. 
honor is required for any and every level of lifting. Whether it's spiritual, listen please. Whether it is intellectual and all of that. When a student sits down in class to listen to a teacher, that attention is honor. The student sits down, he starts by discerning that this man standing before me, even if a student is at a higher level, are we together now? That this man standing before me has paid the price to accumulate the knowledge needed to lift me beyond my position. And so the student further demonstrates his honor by placing value on what the lecturer is saying. Now, being out, many information may escape his mind. He will write them down and follow it through. That is honor. Are we together now? This is very, very powerful. Because many believers do not know honor. They do not understand honor. Violate spiritual systems here and there. And we continue to become victims. Although well-meaning. Nebuchadnezzar dishonored God. And God taught him a lesson. That his sovereign power cannot be shared with any man. He turned him to a beast. And for seven years, his life was miserable. Are we together now? It's very, very important. There are all kinds of things happening in the body of Christ. And I can tell you the reason why many ministries, many businesses, many destinies, many individuals, some of our well-meaning parents never had the opportunity to rise. One word, dishonor. This law also states that anything you dishonor will diminish in your life. Anything. God, man, knowledge, money. Anything you dishonor will begin to fade and erode out of your life. And anything you consistently honor will begin to magnify in your life. It's true. We have dishonored men and women of God around the world. Members have dishonored their pastors and their leaders. Husbands have dishonored their wives. Wives dishonored their husbands. Please listen. Students have dishonored lecturers. Lecturers dishonor students. We have dishonored men. We have dishonored God. We have dishonored laws. The laws that make for success. Isn't it amazing the way people believe that they will make impact and have no regard for laws? They just hope and think that their lives will magically evolve into the will of God. Either because they have good intentions or they think that they are not evil. No. Everything is built by laws. If it must last, it is built by laws. A spiritual life is built by laws. Prosperity is built by laws. Impact and influence is built by laws. Evil is built by laws. Grace of God. The lavish disposition of the grace of God upon a man's life is built by laws. Sustainability of anything is done by laws. And if you do not know the laws that are allocated for having access to the hearts of men, the hearts of kings, especially in this season, then you may not rise to certain levels. Hallelujah. Dishonor is not only bad. Dishonor is sin. You have to understand this. We are not just talking about a concept that is positive or negative. Dishonor is sin that has real consequences. We live in a world where the success and the sacrifices of many can be trivialized within a heartbeat. We don't have regard for the sacrifice, spiritually and otherwise, of people. 
I will tell you why people never rise. Because we have not trained ourselves to discern difference. To know that there is a difference between a failure and a success. They are not the same. It's not an insult. It's not being sarcastic. There is a difference between being anointed and not being anointed. There is a difference between being graced and not being graced. There is a difference between being knowledgeable and ignorant. There is a difference between being old and young. There is a difference between being responsible and irresponsible. There is a difference between being spiritual and unspiritual. Do you know this? If you cannot discern it, then you will not know who and what is deserving of honor. Are we together now? This mic is doing something first to my life and then to all of us. Are we together now? My honor to this mic will be to keep the systems that will keep it amplified. Are we together now? If I off this mic, I cannot pretend to not feel the effect. It will do something to me. I may shout, but my voice will pay for it. So honor is the ability to know the difference between using a mic and not using a mic. You must know the effect on your life. There is a difference between living in the favor of God and living outside the favor of God. You cannot say it. No. There is a difference between obtaining help from God and running your life by your strength and by yourself. Those who have known, have pieced together the principles and regardless of what men say, let me tell you my brothers and my sisters, learn this that I teach you tonight and watch the self-imposed prophecies of people fall to the ground. Even without saying any prayer on it. The immutability of God's counsel, backed up by his own name. There is no failure for a man who understands this law? If you ever see failure in a vision, it remains there in a vision. The laws of God will manipulate his life till he succeeds. Honor. One powerful law. This is why many men of God never rise. This is why many ministries never rise. It's not that they don't have revelation. They have many other things. But there's no honor. There are many things that will never rise. They have not trained themselves to know the difference between a good working family and a family that is not working. There are many people who will never be rich and wealthy because they have not discerned that there is a difference between a wealthy man and someone who is not wealthy. Many times we call the sacrifices of people luck or chance. Listen carefully. When you see a young man anointed, vibrant with fire and grace, just say this guy was lucky maybe he just met a man of god and hands were laid on him that perception that inability to see that people do not just rise by default you don't see a house built and you say wow the wings just put blocks together and added what what creativity from the wind no there are things that are too intentional to be a mistake are you getting what I'm saying now? There are certain results that have gone past the realm of guesswork. There is a level of excellence. There is a level of intention. There are certain levels of anointing that a man can possess that is no longer guesswork. You have to know what you are doing to get there. It's impossible to get there hoping. No, it's like Olympic or boxing fight somebody on the street and have an advantage but you can't go to the ring and fight someone and convince yourself that all things are possible there is an art to winning in the ring there may not be art to winning on the street but if you enter a boxing ring the person will tell you there are courses you take you understand anatomy, the entire anatomy and physiology to know the parts you can punch and the effects that they create so he looks at you and you are already dead because he has seen all the loopholes and yet you just think he's looking with the eyes of a layman until he gives you punch. Then you will know that there is a difference between a boxer and a man. It's amazing how 
Many people look at successful people and sometimes they are even afraid for them. Ah, I hope you will not fail. Are you joking? Do you think success is that cheap? Success is built on absolutely intentional laws. No great ministry is built just by intention. Please listen, listen. There is no great family as any good father, mother, and well-behaved children. There is a level of family result that it cannot be lock. Cannot be lock. When you come from a family that is tied into witchcraft and all of that, there is a level of result that if you attain, there are things that you have dealt with. It's impossible to cross a certain threshold being under captivity. Everybody say, oh no. My assignment is to train your eyes, to train your spirit, to know that everything is not the same. God is not the same as a shrine. So when you say choose between God and one shrine in your village, you don't have honor. It's this honor. That perception, when they kept God, the ark, and they kept Dagon, God's jealousy made the difference clear immediately. It's not the issue of God. There's no point to prove. You are still God. There's a point to prove. He made sure Dagon fell head on. There are times in life that there are points to prove. There are really points to prove. Is God helping us? Right now, there are people here who have traveled from so far. You have come because of one word, honor. You call it hunger, but it is still honor. Are we together now? Reverend Daniels and his dear wife, let's, let's bless God for them. I mean... I was, I was in Eboi. They are based in Enugu. Great ministry work there. I usually go to minister there. It was them together with some pastors that put the meeting in Eboi. It was such a great, phenomenal meeting. And as soon as they were done, I returned back and I was surprised to see these people still here. It's called honor. The discernment that there can be more. You don't just act like that. You think first. Do I need this level? Is it really important? With this level or without it, is there an effect in my life? There are things you must think about. If I'm poor or rich, will it create an effect? If your mind says you don't have honor, because you to think that being wealthy and being poor, any one of them can go, is a sign that you are oppressed. Because the Bible, listen, I'm not just talking about money, I'm opening your eyes to something. So if a young man remains at a level spiritually and you don't contend for higher levels of grace and the anointing, it is because you have not honored the relevance of that dimension of grace. You have not perceived that to be greatly anointed is higher than being anointed. How God anointed Jesus, not just that he was anointed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, so contend for the anointing with an open heart is because you have discerned that the anointing is like money. It is the amount you have that will determine what you can buy. The grace of God upon your life will only solve the problems that are below it. Any challenge that is higher than that grace, you will not be able to purchase those spiritual realities. So the pension for spiritual growth is proof that you are honoring the anointing of the Spirit at that level. Many of you are participating in this, this prayer and fast now, regardless of the inconvenience. Many people have been under all kinds of inconvenience, yet you endure. The name of what you are doing is honor. Because you know that after seven days, you are going to carry something. Something that no devil will be able to stop. And you weighed your convenience. You weighed several things. And you said the sacrifice was worth it. Honor. It is honor that will make someone in need of a politician's help sit at his reception from 6 a.m. in the morning and the man says, I'm sorry, I can't see you now. Can you be patient? I'm, I'm traveling, but I'll come back by 9. He says, no problem. And he sits down there for more than 13 hours 
And the man returns, ah, your excellency, sir, you are back. Because he knows that no matter how long I wait, it's cheaper than suffering. No matter how long I wait in that place, one favor from that man can change my life. A that foolish man will say, what is there? What is there? And you will go back to recycle your pain once again. We we'll apologize for the inconvenience. There's, there's wind blowing, especially for those outside. Everybody say honor. It is honor that teaches you that an elderly person is not the same as a young person. That no matter how knowledgeable you are, there is an advantage that time and age can provide to men. Are we together now? Yeah. The Shunammite woman saw Elisha passing every time. Elisha was not the only one who was passing every time. But the Bible says she perceived that I... <clears throat> there is this... The fact that he was always passing meant that he was always under, he was hearing God all the time and going to execute instructions. And she perceived that this man's coming into my house can provide an advantage. And she said, I will not just tell him come to my house, I will prepare for his coming. So she, she kept watching him. Every time she would see him carrying a book, she didn't ask him, what do you like, books? Do you? She kept perceiving and she went and prepared. She simulated an environment that would suit him and say, Sir, you are welcome. And the man said, All right, madam, you have brought me. Let me tell you what you brought. What is your problem? She said, I don't have any. I live among my people. It's to tell you the level to which she has shelved that case of having a child. Elisha said, no, you don't bring this kind of grace and your life remains the same. It's an insult to the sacrifice that brought this anointing. I paid the price and I went to Gilgal. I went down to John. I got a double portion. I can't enter your house. You honored me and then I walk out. And then your gate man too enters and walks out. And then anybody, and what then is the difference of the sacrifice? I'm not one of the sons of the prophet. I follow two to the end. Madam, the, the, the grace is crying for him. Give it an assignment. He said, no, 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 no. I'm an influential woman. I love my people. And then he said, I will create one by myself. And the servant said, she doesn't have a child. He said, that's it. Notice she didn't ask for a child. She didn't pray for a child. She only honored. And the honor found what problem it will solve by itself. There is a realm of honor that you get to that you will have to open your mouth and pray some things. Everybody kept lamenting about the hunger in Samaria. Ah, Samaria, we're in trouble. I said, you too, you felt the hunger. Babe. They said, yes. And out of all the people who were crying, the women and all the people, they noticed that two people were unaffected by that famine. The king and a strange man, he was not crying for bread. As if he was not a citizen there. And then when they put here, a whole nation is suffering and the solution is in the pocket of one man. Yet he didn't pray. He just kept moving his thing around the city. This honor kept closing the door until someone provoked that grace, provoked that anointing. And he said, all right, by this time tomorrow. He didn't say, let me go and pray. And then I will see the cloud. He said, by time. He didn't say, oh Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I stand as your servant and I call on heaven. He said, me. I make it happen. By this time tomorrow, let the gates of a nation be opened. Your Bible. Honor is powerful. When you honor God, there are things God will do to you that all men will know. It's only God that can do this. God will do some things and sign his signature, like Julius Berger will build and write B so that you will know the difference. So you don't confuse it and think someone else built it. God will build your life and write his name on it. So that when anyone looks at you and says, last year, were you not like this? Say, yes. It's not, I didn't build myself. I was built by an architect. You honor men. You have access to their heart. 
and with their heart will come their influence, their credibility, their resources. You put pressure on everything they are and you will leverage on their credibility to rise. Let me tell you, your, your journey will be hard in life if you do not know how to honor men. All men are not the same. Are we together? Someone I know won an election. And as soon as the person won an election, she that works with him just called me and said, he started jumping. Why was the person jumping? He didn't participate. He didn't do anything yet. Already, they've not sworn in that one, but he started jumping. Ah, God has buttered our bread. Because when you honor a man and have access to his heart, you don't have to rise. He just has to rise and you will follow him. Honor, it will open doors for you that will surprise you. It will accelerate your life beyond your imagination. Please sit down. Sit down. Let me show you four. When I was studying this, it struck my heart and the Lord put it in my heart to show you. I'm going to show you four cases in the Bible where honor or dishonor played a role. And let's see what happened. Number one, just four, there are so many, and then I'll give you the and we'll pray. Someone's life is changing. I know this. I know this. Listen, this is one of the laws that you will see the result immediately. There are some laws that you may see the result later. This one, you can start seeing it from this night. Genesis chapter 9, from verse 20. This was the issue of Noah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Noah and his sons. It says, And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. We are reading to 27. And he drank of the wine and was drunken and covered within his tent. Now, there are all kinds of theological debates about this as to what this really meant. It's, it's, not, it's not the... the, 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 the the revelation of the context is not what I'm, I'm really interested. I want to show you something. And next verse. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told it to his two without. 23. And Shem and Jack took a garment, listen carefully, and laid it on both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. 24. And Noah awoke from wine and knew he was sleeping. He was not told, though. He woke up and knew that his younger son, he knew what had done to him, 25. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren, 26. And he said, Remember, he didn't know who did what. And he didn't say, all of you, come. Who saw the nakedness and who covered it? That means Noah was not anointed. A man that built an ark that all the animals entered. Is that an ordinary man? Notice how the Bible does not even talk about vineyard and the wine again. It just focuses on the cause and the blessing. He wakes up from his sleep. And just knows that many things happened while he was sleeping. The same way you can look at your father and say, my useless father. If only this man went to school. And while you are saying it, he's sleeping. But there are laws. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm telling you. These are laws and ordinance. None of the sons, he didn't call an assembly and say, okay, tell me what happened. And he said, daddy, this is what happened. No. He got up and then he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Enan shall be his servant. 27. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. End of discussion. What was the offense? Dishonor. Someone dishonored Noah. Another person honored Noah. Two of them instantly got rewards for it. I told you honor is a seed. 
is a seed that grows fast like a weed. Number two. Now this one you have a lot to learn here. Genesis chapter 16. Ah, the Lord opened my eyes to see something there. Genesis chapter 16. This is the story of Sarah and Hagar. Please look up and learn something powerful here. And now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no child. Notice that all these stories start with something that looks like a problem. And then in the midst of it, the problem is forgotten. And then the context of honor or dishonor is the discussion. And it says, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar, verse 2. And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into my handmaid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. Now you have to study in Jewish practice to know. This was not anything unusual at those times. Your brother's wife could bear children for you and maids and all of that. So, And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Verse 3. Notice. And Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt ten years and so on and so forth, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. Verse 4. And he went into Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Notice the story. This was a girl that was brought and then he said, Thor, since I'm not able to give you a child. Let me not be too selfish. That is because of me. Based on that tradition now. Here is my housemate. Have a child with her. And at the moment the lady noticed she was pregnant. Something happened. Next verse. And Sarai said unto Abraham. My wrong be upon me. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived. I was despised in her eyes. Watch this. The Lord judge between me and thee. Next verse. But Abraham said to Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do with her as it pleaseth thee. And Sarah dealt hardly with her. She fled from her face. Now get ready to learn the lesson. And the angel of the Lord. So Sarah drove Hagar now. Are you getting the story now? And the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness. By the fountain in the way of shore. Eight. And he said, listen, Hagar, Sarah's maid, when comest thou, what did the angel call her? Sarah's maid. We know the protocol, even from the spirit. Just because you have a child, I will call you by that ordinance. You are still Sarah's maid. Your lifting was connected to Sarah. And even though you have left, the realm of the spirit still recognizes that this lifting was tied Sarah. He says, Whence camest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarah. Look at this. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, What did he say? Return to thy mistress and submit yourself under her hands. In other words, madam, there's no hope for your situation. Honor has closed the door. Not even me. My recommendation is go back. Let that submission be in place. Otherwise, I'm meeting you here. I would see go like that. This is Bible. Return to your mistress and submit yourself to her. Last verse. <laughs> And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Go back. Every other thing is still tied to that. Go back and submit yourself. Look at this kind of story. A woman is running away and an angel meets her. And she's complaining that this wicked, and the Bible testifies that Sarah truly dealt with her hardly. He would have said, go and tell Sarah you saw me. I, the angel of the Lord, has said she should mind herself. And he says, go back to your mistress. I'm showing you very deep spirituality. You will now know why Elisha received the mantle. Number three. Numbers chapter 12. Follow me believers. And let's grow in the spirit. Numbers chapter 12. 
This involved relatives now. Relatives. Relatives. Because dishonor happens a lot with family. And so, relatives. And Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the utopian, the word utopian means black woman, whom he had married, for he had married an utopian woman. Verse 2. And they said, had the Lord, now they now digress and started saying, does God speak to Moses alone? Had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? And had he not also spoken by us? I hope you know Miriam is a prophetess. That means she was hearing God and Aaron was a priest too. So they are saying, why? I mean, Moses, what are you saying? I am a prophetess and this guy is a priest. Us too here and there, we are hearing God. And the Lord had it. And the Lord had it. What conversation? Two of them were talking, you know. And while they were talking, God said, let me see what I'm saying. And the Lord had it. Next verse. Now the man Moses was very meek. Above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Verse 4. And the Lord spake suddenly to Moses. Hey! God comes to hear something and goes back and says, Moses, come. Something is about to happen to two of your relatives now. Let me inform you so that you don't beg me. I'm the one who is going to do it now. God knew what Moses can do. And he knows if Moses talks, he will interrupt the process. He's collecting permission from Moses to deal with certain people here. And Moses, and unto Aaron and Miriam, come out ye three to the tabernacle of the congregation. And three of them came out. Three of them hear God, remember. So now verify that they all hear God. Because God called three of them and all of them had. Next verse. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tent and called Aaron and Miriam and they both came forward. And, and he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Seven. Hi. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. One day I will explain to you what God just said. Next verse. With him I will speak mouth to mouth. That look, look, you people receive visions and dreams, but I've left that realm with Moses. I don't just, I come to him. My level of relationship with Moses is that I come to him and speak from my mouth to his mouth. And not in dark speeches and in similitudes of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against, not me, my servant Moses. Next verse. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he left. Next verse. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. 11. Next verse. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord. The adjustment happened immediately. I don't know what I called you before, but after seeing this cloud, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee. Was this not what Haman did to Esther when it was imminent that he was going to die? I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. I told you dishonor is a sin. Next verse. Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed. And when he cometh out of his mother's womb, 13. And Moses, you see why God came to Moses before? And Moses now said, God, oh yeah, come, come, I've, I've looked at this. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, heal her now, oh God, I beseech thee. Look at a man talking with God, oh. Not, oh God, heal her now. God, is okay, don't. 14. And the Lord said to Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? He says, let her be shut out from the camp seven days. And after that, let her be sieved in again. Last verse. 
Miriam was shot out of the camp seven days and the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again. You can continue. She later recovered. But I'm saying just because a man that God loved, the jealousy of God came down. Dishonor. The same way you can honor a man in secret. He's not even aware. And God will also hear it and see it. And God will arise and deposit something upon your life. Are you getting blessed? Very powerful. The last scripture. And then I'll show you certain keys. Second Kings chapter 2. Second Kings chapter 2. From verse 3. Elisha was in, in the heat of the anointing, the portion anointing that just rested on him. Now, this one now had to do with children. Sometimes, Ba, is really, really strange. This is children. And he went forth from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going by the way, there came forth what? Little children. Should they not be spared? Little children. There came forth little children out of the city and mocked him, saying, Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. 24. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two shares out of the wood and tear forty and two of them. He cursed them in whose name? Is it not the same God that said the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, but rich in love? Small children, what are not oh, no problem. These are little children. They are learning. And yet he turns to them and curses them in the name of the Lord. And bears come out and injure and children. Think how many things honor can do in your life and how many things dishonor can do in your life. Dishonor to the law of giving alone has kept a lot of people poor. Dishonor to productivity has kept a lot of people seeing visions of wealth that will never actualize. Let me tell you this. Please listen. And this is a message to the body of Christ. There is a growing trend of many young vibrant ministers, especially apostles and prophets, all around the nation of Africa and the world, who because of civilization and the context of our understanding today, are consistently violating this. Calling the name of every man of God, tearing men of God down in the name of I know this, I know that, destroying all kinds of people. Let me tell you, the laws of God are irrefutable. It's only a matter of time. You will see grave consequences. The people like pity are the children of these people. Not even them. They are endangering their children not knowing. And some of you here have been victims of it. You stand whether on social media, whether whatever, tear down anybody, insult anybody. You see a rich man getting private jet, you write nonsense online. Stupid criminals. We are coming for you. You see a man anointed and the next thing you are saying something really nasty. How are we sure it's the power of God? And while that is happening, God is hearing. He's bringing down, because the covenant of that man with God has a voice. It's an altar that is maintained by sacrifice. Please listen very carefully. I'm teaching you powerful spiritual principles. Many shop owners have insulted everybody succeeding. As though is the reason why they are not succeeding. And their shop started down. And notice that the more they pray, the more it goes down. Because that trouble didn't come from Satan. So there is nothing to cast there. I've seen men of God who went down. And their voices almost never heard again. Because of the level, the pungency of their criticizing all kinds of people. Today, everybody right now is an analyst of the body of Christ. Analyzing what is happening. Analyzing who is anointed. Analyzing this and that is dangerous. Listen to me. Listen to me. 
These are spiritual principles. Nobody rose up just like that. It's the same way they criticized William Branham. Just because things went bad at the end of Islam and all of that, people would tear down. People had written all kinds of books. And his grace is not speaking around the body of Christ. Because of that pungency. Listen very carefully. Those who may not have crowd will tear down anybody says the issue of crowd. What is their membership? Sometimes those things come from a standpoint of sarcasm. And God, who is the one who brings men is hearing. And then we secretly go back and we say, God, must we remain like this? And God says, me, I'm the force behind this lack of growth. How many unemployed people will see someone and say, what are you doing now? He say, I'm working in one school. He say, ah, you. It's better to have been making a kunua and zobo to sell. You mean you are right there. You see that? You think it's a joke. But God is hearing. That you have never submitted your CV and gotten a job. And someone without submitting his CV, he got a job. I agree that he's getting 4,000. But because we have learned dishonor. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. Our lives, we continue to web our lives with all kinds of strings of dishonor. There are people who have refused to rise because of this one reason. Dishonor. Honor is the key to access. And they never access grace. They never access wisdom. There are many wealthy people in this city, for instance. And there are not many people who have gone to sit down and say, I came to visit you, sir. Is there one or two things you can teach me? Say, no. Everybody is a thief. Everybody is an armed robber. And they continue to re-impart upon themselves that level forever. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. Those who have understood this have risen in ways that you cannot imagine. Happy are you when God carries the heart of a man and gives to you. That God connects you huh, to the heart of a man through honor. Is somebody learning something? So when you master honor, when you learn honor, you will see doors opening by themselves. There are men of God who were invited to certain places once and will never go back there again. Because they did not understand the principle of honor to these systems. When they took advantage of anything and just tore everybody down. There are some of you who come to the house of great people and you destroy your opportunity for connection forever. You come to a house and you cross your leg, you put it on a chair and you just balance and the next thing... Uh, what, what would you like? Uh, I don't take too much pepper. What exactly do you have? Let me know what you have. And the person who is, for instance, just an example, the person who is talking is poor and doesn't have any open door. Are you seeing that now? Let me tell you this. If doors refuse to open, I am telling you this. It is dishonor that has kept it closed. I never see any man or woman that is worthy of honor and will not communicate the honor that is due because I know the consequence. There are many people in this city who would have been long healed by now. There are many people who would have been long delivered by now. But dishonor is the gate and the padlock the devil used to keep them in their situations forever. You can pray, you can fast, but there are certain realms you cannot enter except through honor. Honor is the seed for access. The Lord by honor and by it has taken me to places today that I know there is no reason and there is no other way I would have gotten there. What honor can do is powerful. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. You will step into prepared blessings when you understand honor. Honor to God, honor to men, honor to principles. I'm not teaching you human worship. Now, let me tell you this, and let me balance it very quickly. 
it is foolish and stupid of any great man especially a man of god when people show you honor and you take them for granted any wise person who knows god and has value for life will not take you for granted when you honor them what i'm saying now yes there are things people do to me that I'm, if i have my way i will beg them and say please don't don't even please i'm okay i know you honor me from your heart the lord bless you let's leave it like that but that you dishonor men and you want to rise every realm you dishonor you've exempted yourself from entering that realm whether it's financially whether it's spiritually or otherwise see listen this is why you find out that you continue to dishonor people and secretly try to enter that realm and there is a resistance that no prayer will take away apostle you don't know what my father did to me my, my father is not a nice man you don't know what my mother did these people left me i would have died i would have gone into prostitution i paid school fees by myself now they think that i should come and bless them listen let me tell you they may not have gotten it well but it is no license for dishonor they may do everything wrong but one day they will do something right Pay for that one day because the blessing you will get the day they get it right will follow you transgenerationally hallelujah i pay attention there are ministries that honor me so much and honor me truly and i have seen the effect when i teach and share god's word in those places i see the result i know that the honor is sincere and you will see that those people receive, those people rise, those people grow. That's why in many churches it is us that come and receive. Most members hardly, you know why? Because they know the pastor, they know the elder, maybe he's even their biological father. So when he's preaching and he says, everybody stretch forth your hands, you just laugh and say, daddy, you will soon be hungry now. He's, I'm the one who prepares your meal. And then God will hear you. How many wives dishonor their husbands because they are already married? Some come. They think that just because they are married, they dishonor. When they get married, they do all kinds of things nice. Two weeks after the marriage, the man is just one, one item I am joined with forever. And God is hearing. Because the possibilities and the grace of that man will speak to every other person except the wife. The same thing with the woman. Men will get married to women and think they are just rags. The Bible says, submit, go and do this. Whereas the man is not prayerful. And that lady came as the reason, even God told you that she's the reason why you are succeeding. Then the day you annoy her, everything fails. You go to God and God says, like he told Hagar, go back. You may not submit to the woman, but you must submit to that possibility. If you want a revival of that dimension. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is true. I am a product of what honor can do. I am a product of what honor can do. I am a product of what honor can do. Listen, you will not be able to dig every well by yourself. No matter how hardworking you are. Your lifetime is too small to dig those wells. There are wells that have already been dug. Those wells like Jacob's well will last generations use honor as a fetcher to draw and draw again enough to feed you and feed a generation jesus went to a city and could not do mighty miracles what simple is this not the carpenter's son but there was a blind man when he was passing jericho for the last time he says thou son of david have mercy he didn't say can you have mercy mm -mm. i know you have it have mercy you oh. you won't pass me have mercy and jesus said what should i do for you that i may regain my sight and his eyes open i continue to search for dishonor around my life so that i will correct it very fast i tell you any door that is closed there's something there is an element of dishonor that may be there if you are sincere why oh god am i surrounded by anointed people and i can never carry real grace 
dishonor. Why am I surrounded by wealthy people and I continue to remain poor? Dishonor. Why am I surrounded by wise people and I continue to be foolish again and again? Why am I surrounded by people who are on fire and there's no revelation? They give you any scripture, you can't say anything about it. Notice the great men of men of God. Notice the chefs. They don't have any revelation. As if all they came to do was to cook. Can't you see that visitors that you are cooking for, their lives are being changed. And you continue to serve the food and receive tips. Whereas one day you say, sir, this chef I'm, 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 is, is passion, but I need results. I've served your food now, but I need something. Are you getting what I'm saying? When I meet extremely great people, I don't waste that time. I don't sit down and say, and sometimes, ah, my apostle, great man and great this. I just find a forum where we're alone and find a seat and say, sir, I decide. I don't just say, pray for me. That's a stupid approach. That's not honor. You will never receive anything that way. You must discern. I know the difference between you and me. The results show it. I am not there yet. Simple and straightforward. And I beckon on whatever grace that brought this result. And with a passionate heart, they will release. Everybody that has something knows it. And they know when it leaves them to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This ministry is enjoying the blessings of the body of Christ because of the honor of the body of Christ. I say this with all blessings. We don't have a YouTube channel as it were. I don't know if the media has that. But there is almost no message you will type and you will not find. Someone took it as a responsibility without payment. It is because a son was sown. And so it was sown to the body. And the harvest also came from the body. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? When it was time to, for the sick here this morning, many of you came and you watched a Benihim video first. It doesn't mean I'm not anointed to pray for you. But I know from whence... You see, let me tell you. A river that forgets its source, truly speaking, you will dry up. It's a matter of time. You will dry up to nonsense and, and not know where you came from again. Our proud generation continues to have results for a while and then it will disappear because the moment you have results most times people don't know the difference again somebody trained you in business now you have become a millionaire and you come to meet the person in the shop bros are you there you are an apprentice there and you come with your g-wagon and smile you have a g-wagon i have a g-wagon don't harass me i just came back from italy as a foolish man. One day you will not know the explanation why things will go down. And you will go to God and he will give you the recommendation of Hagar. Go back. You are a great man, but in the realm of the spirit, you are still Sarah's maid. The law of honor. The law of honor. I shared with you my story that I wanted to go to and scrub the toilet of Charles and Francis Hunter as a man of God. Not to go for a conference. Not to say, just to let you know that there is a young man all the way from Nigeria. He's by the name Joshua Selman. He's my humble self. Is that humility? I was going to scrub the toilet. Not to go as a man of God. Oh, I would have gladly scrubbed that toilet. Shakoska Lord, whatever grace will make a man to raise hundred wheelchairs in one meeting, laugh at it. Whatever grace, this is the law of honor. Many people don't know how to receive miracles. When I talk like this, you would think it's arrogance. If I get up in the morning with my eyes blind, by 6 p.m., that eyes must have been opened. The desperation to receive is not there. Many people are too ashamed to really receive. 
the woman with the issue of blood said, get out of my way. I'm the one who knows what I'm suffering. She let me touch the hem of his garment. And the people were trying to embarrass her. No, let me touch the hem of his garment. And she was free. Don't violate this ordinance. Let me give you a few keys. Our time is gone. We should pray. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will value this that I shared with you. And you will watch how easy life can be. Keys to honor. One, wisdom. There cannot be honor until there is wisdom. You need a deposit of deep stone to manifest honor. Wisdom to know the protocol of greatness. Vashti was a foolish woman for one reason. She lacked wisdom. It was her wisdom that culminated to dishonor that made her pay the price. There is no record of Vashti going back to beg the king. She forgot she was only queen because she married the king. Are we together? No wisdom. The king called on her to his chamber to come and flaunt the glory. And she said, no, I have my own agenda. And the elders came and said, king, do something about this woman. If not, other women will start doing the same thing. And the king said, Vashti, you are gone. When Sarah came, study the book of Sarah and see honor personified. What most people see there is favor. You are seeing the child. Look at the mother. Look at how the pregnancy started until the child called favor was born she meets the king on hearing that a wicked man called her man wants to destroy the people of god and the king said esther what do you want to half of my kingdom she said nothing oh king would you grant me the honor of hosting you to a banquet he said that is it is there any problem she said no yet there was an emergency Lives were about to be... She knew that in dealing with greatness, timing matters. Not every time is the time. You can just see your destiny help and say anything for the boys. Immediately, he planned to give you a job. Because of that, he will vow that your children's children will not get a job. Timing. There are many people, as soon as you see a great man, the next thing you come, sir, uh, anything for us, sir. Whereas the man was about to ask you, young man, what do you do? We are looking for a secretary. Is it alright if we send you to our Dubai office and you foolishly come with mediocrity and say, sir, you are looking as if I'm not so bad, but will you go like that? You see, stop that. Every time you see a great man, your first element is not to beg. Listen to me and learn. Many young people continue to mess up. You want 1,000, they will give you 1,000. Yet you have lost access to their hearts. Are we together? Esther now tells the king, let me host you. He said, alright, let me come and try. And Esther prepared a, permit me to use the word, a wicked banquet. When the king ate this, she came again. He said, now I'm ready. Is there any request? He said, no sir. Just grant me the privilege of doing this again. And then another time she now said, now, I want it to be a feast of wine. You know wine is a spirit in the Bible. She's about to make a request. And she's making a request against the closest friend of the king. What if the king says, you want me to fight my friend, I will kill you. She knew the timing. There was something that needed to happen for him. Because her man was his right hand man. So when the king took the wine, he was filled with that wine. And he sat down. And then she came. What do you want, Esther? And she said, Oh king, there is a man who, that wants to destroy me. Your one and only queen and my woman. He said, Who is that? He said, That is the man that stands by your side. Wise king. He left and went to a garden. He didn't answer yet. He left and went to the garden because the word of a king is a law. And he said, let me think first. Let me not talk foolishly. Will this decision be honorable? Many times silence is proof of wisdom. You don't have to be under pressure to answer everything. Is God helping someone today? Do, sweep it. Do it again by the second day. 
do it again by the third day. Very soon, somebody will call you and say, why are you doing this? He said, well, I, I plan to have this kind of thing. I'm a responsible person. I have learned on. I just feel I should do this. Every great man knows greatness. When it, even if it is in infancy, they will look and say, mm -mm, you. They will make you a manager. They will say, okay, keep sweeping. A wise man will not call you immediately. He will test the sincerity of your honor. He will say, continue doing it just to know you are not a thief. That's all. And then he says, watch this person. And for six months, you will sweep with nobody saying thank you. But on the seventh day of... Ah, you know how Bible talks. You will come to sweep and see a car with a key and a letter inside. Open me. Say, ah, I won't do this, so I'm not a thief. And you open it, and that's the prayer request of someone for ten years. There is a key to every territory. It's called honor. You are sandwiched between people who are greater than you and people who you are greater than. If you keep receiving honor from those who are greater than, everybody will reach your level and leave you. You, you have to keep rising too while you bring others up. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Yes. There is no program that is done in this ministry that I will not sow into it. This ministry is a blessed ministry. But even at that, I must look for something and sow into it. Principles. When your prayer life goes down, is dishonor. Because it's proof that you are trying to show God you are the Lord of your own life. And He's watching. You get up in the morning, you yawn your way through a life. You return back by the mercy of God and you will not understand that He kept you. You will continue on till the day Keke almost capsizes you. And then you will remember the scripture. It is vain to wake up early and sleep night only to eat the bread of sorrow. But it is God that gives men sleep and rest. He will return back and say, God, I don't know what entered me, but I am back. Oh no. We are going to pray. Wisdom. Number two. Let me rush it. I apologize for taking our time this night. The second key to honor is forbearance. You cannot practice honor if all you have is forgiveness. Forbearance is a deeper dimension. Forbearance means it will happen again. So you wire it into your system of honor. That this person I honor is a noise maker. I don't like noise. But I have to prepare my mind to hear noise all the time. It's called forbearance. Adaptation is proof of honor. The greater one will not be the one to be flexible and adjust to you. You are the one who will have to stretch yourself. Are we together? Forbearance. Many of you cannot forbear great people. Let me give you a very big secret. Great people are difficult people. The complexity around the systems that work in their life will not only need wisdom, it will need forbearance. There are many yeses you have to say without knowing what you are doing. Forbearance. I'm not a fool. I can't continue to do a mumu in this office. I'm fighting for my rights. And they say, open the gate for him. Please leave this place. After two months, you find out that you had one stream of income coming by the mercy of God. And an erratic dishonor of five minutes is costing your children's school fees. Forbearance. Everybody say forbearance. A lot of Pentecostals have lost graces in the Orthodox circle. Because they don't have the forbearance. You go to an Anglican church and there's a long hymn. You check how many verse stanzas. Six. And the man leading will tell you when we get to verse five, we'll sing it again. He's enjoying what he's saying. And you are, you are sad. You are, you are nauseated. You are angry. You are already offended. You are offended by everything, the chance and all of that. Whereas there was a grace there for you to get. To forbear. To forbear. To forbear is not to forgive. To forbear is to wire yourself to update everything. Number three. The third key to honor is to pray for those you seek to receive from. You don't pray for a man you seek to receive from, you will not get anything. Let me tell you. 
Many people don't pray for those who they seek to receive from. Pray. Just by praying for them alone. Job 42 and verse 10. You pray for those who have gotten... The friends of Job were not oppressed. He was wealthier and greater than them. But with respect to his predicament, they had become greater than him. And he had to submit to honor them by investing prayer. Job 42 and verse 10. He says, the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends, not himself. Number four. Genuinely celebrate those you honor. Not eye service. Not, ah, bless God for Papa Oyedepo. Bless God for Papa Iadeboe. And then you go to one godless discussion of three or four people. He said, don't mind all these fathers of faith. I'm so disappointed. I, I, I hate them more. It's just that if you say it now, they will beat you. So that's the real truth. I really hate them. But it's just that outside, let me honor them. No. Like Noah, they may be asleep. But they are still seeing. And they are still hearing. And they will wake up and know who said what. And who didn't say what. Sight happens whether you are asleep or awake. Paul was blind for three days yet he was seeing visions. Celebrate. Celebrate. A ministry that is blessing you, celebrate it. A life that is blessing you, celebrate that life. Genuinely celebrate them. Finally, love. The last key to genuine honor is love. You cannot honor a man, a principle, a system, and even the God that you do not love. 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 I love the body of Christ. I love koinonia. I love the workers. I love the leaders from the depth of my heart. And it has nothing to do with selfishness. I wish we had time. I wish we had time. I wish we had time. Do you know the Bible says, listen carefully. All that I've said about honor suggests to higher authorities. But that's only one dimension of honor. Because you also have to honor people prophetically who are about to rise. You don't just honor those who have risen. They have plateaued and you have seen it. But there are people who are about to rise. You will need discernment. 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 Many of us will dishonor everybody lower than you. And everybody who cannot give you anything. Sam, what do you have to offer? Nothing. I, please, you are not worth my honor. Emeka, you are a doctor. I, I need injection because I don't know where my leg is. Like I don't. I, I honor you. Wonderful. Except for the fact that you have registered your exit from Sam's life before he rises. The moment he rises, he rises with you. He has noted you that you qualify for exit from his life. So the secret, therefore, and the jackpot is to honor all men. Because God is the lifter of men. My brothers and my sisters. You can, you see me, or little children here. They come and match my cloth. And sometimes the protocol wants to stop them. I say, leave it all. This debt they are matching, they will buy the soap tomorrow. They have the ability. There are many of you who cannot play with children. There are many who... You, you, you can dishonor and oppress anybody lower than you. Once anybody is higher than you, you can lie down and roll on the ground. But when there is anybody who doesn't have anything as a yet to give to you, you destroy them. You are making a big mistake. The key to owning the future is to honor those who God is lifting for the future. The Jimmy will say it this way. Find a man who is rising and in that life. Listen, let me tell you this. You know, there are many people who believe that just because they knew you and they were connected, it means they are stakeholders. No. Connection is not enough to be a stakeholder. It must translate from a connection to an event. Relationships that are investments are the relationships that are worth maintaining. An ordinary connection is not worth it. An investment of time, of resources. 
imagine the people that knew you. They don't know what God is doing in your life now. They are looking at the you of five years. And there is nothing comely there. Except for the fact that it will be like the twinkling of an eye. One day they will be following on Facebook and say, ah, Who is this? You? As though they ask God not to lift you. And then you suddenly rise. And you watch the way they casually and shamelessly call you. It is so, so, so and so. Call me back quickly. No. The person you want to call is not there again. This is a newer version. If your relationship was not an investment that could grow, then it didn't yield anything. Are you getting what I'm saying? The easiest way to prosper is through relationships. But relationship as an investment, not a connection. This is already a preview of tomorrow. Relationship as an investment, not a connection. This is what Reverend Dan and his wife are doing. These are general overseers. They left a boy and they left a nugu. Not only to come and receive. Let me tell you, it's not every time you need to receive. There are times that you have to invest whether you are comfortable or not. Politicians know this. Business people know this. Someone will leave Kenya and leave South Africa to come for the birthday party of a two-year-old baby. What has the baby done for him? What of the hand that holds the baby? That's where his paycheck comes from. Are we together? So the woman with the alabaster box discerned that this man will one day be the king of kings. And I have a terrible life. What can I do to edge my relationship in this man's life? And she took a, 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 a what do they call it? A box, spike nut, a year's wages. And she did something she knew it would not be easy for any other person to do. She smashed it at his feet and used her hair. And Jesus said, any time you are talking about me and the gospel, you must make reference to this woman. When we get to heaven, you will know that you will not just see the difference. It's in the Bible. I mean, it's in the Bible. There are rankings based on relationship. This is your Bible. The elders in heaven there, the 24 living creatures, what did they do to God? That keeps them in the throne. The angels. They only and get messages and leave. But they are creatures that say, it's only God that is going to When you see greatness, don't ignore it. Turn your relationships from connections to investments. You send a text, may God bless you, daddy. May God bless you, mommy. They don't reply. Continue. An investment you do returns immediately. But it's working. The day they are looking for good people to bless, your sacrifice is too much for you to be ignored. Hallelujah. There are several men of God that it's difficult for me to tell them no. Even when my schedules are already booked, if they do come, I will try to tell them to find a way. Even if it's a weekday, let's squeeze. Even if it's one day, no problem. Let me honor them. Because of what they have done. There are people when I see their missed calls, provided I have the time, even if it's two minutes, I can even squeeze and just send a text and say, I'm sorry. I may not be able to talk to you now, but I'll reply you. All the debt, it forces you to pay back. We are gathered here for seven days. And if God does not change our lives, you can activate this system. Try it this night. Write down the five or ten people in your life that are most deserving of your honor. And write down the top ten people in who make you a big deal. Anybody that makes you a big deal, don't trivialize them. Because the whole world does not have that level of honor. If you make me a big deal, I will invest into your life. Make God a big deal and see what he does to you. Is somebody learning now? When you find anybody in your life that thinks you are somewhat celebrating and makes you a big deal, be wise enough to separate them. And let me tell you this. Never give people access beyond their last level of honor. Don't make your life that cheap. 
as you give people access, watch for the honor that follows. If the closer they get, the more the honor goes down. Stop there. Stop from the last place of honor and remain there. God is the one who prescribed this. What you do in my parlor may qualify you for my kitchen. May qualify you for my bedroom. Then may qualify you to my safe. You don't come from the gates. There are visitors that you look through the pigeonhole and say, why are you here? Say, I just need help. You squeeze 1,000 and say, please go. It's not, it's not insult. It's the level of relationship. There are others you can open the gate and say, okay, what is it? You say, can't we get a shade? You have not. That shade you see has a, a dimension. There are others you say you are welcome. There are others you say you are welcome as far as you want. Don't believe that everybody has the same access. Listen to me. Anybody that dishonors you, don't fight them, but peg them at the last place of honor and keep it there until there is a reason to transit. And some of them, sadly, sadly, may be people in ministry, people in whatever kind of thing. Refuse that. Is someone learning this? Otherwise, you would destroy yourself. Somebody will come and meet you and say, give me a business advice. You gave him a business advice yesterday. And the person trivialized it, made nonsense out of it. When he was teaching it, he didn't give credit and honor to you and felt it was not an issue. Then he says, give me another one. He said, no, no. Let your honor qualify you for the next access. When you find people who the closer they come to you, the higher the honor, treasure them. They are an endangered species. The world does not have many of such people. These are kingdom secrets, my brothers and my sisters. You should share the grace tonight knowing that a real key was given to you. Go to your office tomorrow and you see people who are undeserving of your honor and you will see the mistakes you have been making. You told people secrets about your life, secrets about your family, secrets about your destiny, secrets about certain things and they have no fortitude for honor. Everybody say honor. This is a powerful law. Powerful law. To the degree to which you honor God, he will bring you into his inner chambers. He will say, come. Let me show you the things you will not hear in a congregation. Come, my son. Let me show you my ways. These are the secrets of the Lord that are with them that fear him. And he will show you not his principles, his covenants. There are many of us, we would have received certain things from our parents and our loved ones. But sadly, some of them went to the grave with secrets they never told you. Because dishonor made it difficult to get it across to you. If this is all you know, you have found something that can make you great. God loves everybody. But not everybody is his friend. Read your Bible. He didn't say, you all are my friends. Mm -mm. I died for you, yes. You are my children, yes. I'm your Lord, yes. But there are people, he says, you are my friend. Moses, come to talk with you. How are you today? And he talks back to him. He came in the cool of the day to talk to Adam and talk to Eve. When dishonor happened, he said, that's it. I preach. We're going to pray this night. Lord, I found the key. I found the key. This is the kind of meeting that afterwards you will send your pastors tonight and say, Pastor, sir, let me teach you how to honor in one minute. Many of you don't know how to honor. God bless you for me, sir. It's not honor. There are many people who have blessed my life just to let you know you are one of them. That's foolishness. That's not honor. The goal of honor is to show someone that you perceive their uniqueness and the extent of their impact. So you are going to, within the context of the honor, isolate them and give them an experience that will make you remain desirable in their eyes. Are we together? 
Just you know I'm blessed by your message. Commanding result. Thanks. That's not honor. That's expression. Honor must carry your discernment to it. Transfer your discernment to words and communicate it. Sam, I just want to let you know that I am grateful. There are so many worshippers and so people, but there's something about your voice and the grace of God upon your life. Every time you raise that song, my spirit is lifted. The other day you raised the song, you didn't know what, I was ha- what was happening to me. That's honor. He may forget what you said, but he will mark your face. The next time he sees your face, he will associate it with pleasantness. And you become his friend. There are people whose persona reflect pungency. People avoid you because of a track record of what your persona and your face creates in people. It must change. That one is not an evil veil. It's a self-inflicted veil as a result of not discerning the law of honor. Every time I see this, my children, they honor me and you see how I, I hug all of them from the depth of my heart. There was one day, one of the other ones wanted to just come and hug and pat me in the back and I drew his ears. I said, don't do that again. You are a child. When you grow, we will let you know you have grown. Now you are a child. When you are hugged, hug with respect. You will be doing it because of my ego. It's a training. If not, you will lose touch. With Don't be afraid to correct people. Really love them. Sometimes we think that when you correct people, it's a proof of insecurity. Let them not say maybe they are rising. No. What then is the... If when you have labored over people, you are a stakeholder over their growth. There's nobody staying under my roof and under my care, physically or spiritually, that will go out of the boundary of discipline and correction. No. You choose to be a fugitive like a prodigal son, you will go. But provided you are within that house, there is a level of decorum that you should have. Is God blessing us? Yes. Teach your children to honor. Let a grown child not come and slap a visitor. Hold him, knock his head in front of the visitor and say, the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Forget the cry that is happening. The message is getting in. Whenever you see a man that has done what you have not done, don't think it was a mistake. Have the fortitude to give that respect. Those who, those who fight Kung Fu, you go to most of these places where they fight Kung Fu, these temples, you will see Bruce Lee's picture. It's still there. They stand and they respect it before they start fighting. The man is long gone. But they say, don't deceive yourself that because you are a black belter, you are Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was in a class of his own. But there are bills now. There are people, every man of God is the same. Same Holy Spirit, same God until your results prove otherwise. Honor does not kill. Honor does not reduce. Honor multiplies. Honor fast tracks. Listen to me. My dear ladies, let me tell you this. Master honor and you would have mastered the key to any man's heart. Gentlemen, let me teach you this. Master honor will master the key to both the hands and the resources and the credibility of any man. There are people I can endorse and I can stake my reputation. Even if they are wrong, I will step in for them because they have communicated honor. Are we together? Tonight we are going to pray. Our time is gone, but it's worth it. This is, this is the kind of meeting that will change your life. That you will leave this place knowing that something has happened. You didn't just come to fast and pray for nothing. Is someone ready to pray? I'd like you to stand up and just think for one minute. We're praying just for about five minutes. But don't pray. Just, 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 just in the quietness of your spirit. I want you to think of the doors that can open right now when you practice this law. The Lord connected you to a consular officer. You would have had free access to visas if you maximize that moment and honor the person. You dishonor the person only for you to go and get a visa. You find out that it was him. One day you met with a CEO in a shopping mall. You didn't maximize the moment. Now you are low a job and you suddenly realize the person is the CEO. And the words that you spoke that day now stands against you. 
I want you to think carefully. The doors that would have opened. Oh Lord, I would have gotten that project. So you gave it to me. But dishonor retrieved it back from me. Think of the levels of the anointing that you would have been working in right now. It's not a very difficult thing for men to speak good about your life. It's not a difficult thing for people to say, lift this person, lift this person, lift this person. But dishonor killed it. Does the influence of great people matter to you? Does the track record and the relationships they have, does it matter to you? Do you think God can use it to lift you? Does the anointing of a genuinely anointed man matter to you? Do you think when that grace leaves you, your life will change? It's discernment. I'm not teaching you human worship. I'm teaching you to begin to interpret things. And people honor you, find a way of reciprocating it back. Learn this today. Don't just collect honor. Don't just collect honor. Ah, this Apostle Joshua Selman, take a seat, kneel down, lie down, roll on the ground. No. As they sow that seed from me, sow it back so that you create a harvest. If children honor you, honor them back. If your contemporaries honor you, honor them back. If those above you honor you, honor them back. If those below you honor you, honor them back. Let it be a system of honor. You will look like a fool for a while. You will look cheap for a while until the results separate you in a cadre that is incontestable. You become the song in the mouth of every great man. Everyone is looking for a chance to lift you. The way people call me all the time, Apostle, is there something we can do for you? Apostle, is this and that? And I say, I'm okay, God is faithful. Can I? And I say, ah, this is the honor. Honor. When people think about you, what comes to them? Is it the desire to lift you? Is it the desire to bless you? Let me tell you this. This gentleman you see, come, Kenny. This Kenny you are seeing, this boy you see, served for years. This Kenny will cook for me and do a lot of things as you are seeing. Many things happen around his life and he still made up his mind. And I knew that I said, this guy is going to be a great man of God one day. I'm telling you this. It's not just because he's here. You see that? Gradually, gradually, God began to lift him in the grace of God upon his life. Almost every great man in this street that you see, that you desire, there is the story of their lifting, except your own. You want to route your lifting through a window. An angel of justice will keep you there and say, go back. It doesn't happen that way. It is only thieves that enter through the window. There are people who are too big to serve in a department. You can see Shadrach. Where is he? This is come. This is the pastor of Shadrach is the pastor of um, of Living Word, and he's one of the protocol people. Pastor Francis is outside, the assistant pastor. This big man is in for nonsense without result is a cause from hell. When you come and see great people serving, let it be a lesson that you open your heart and say, God, whatever must land upon my life, let it land. Let me tell you, scattered in this ministry are men and women who have their own ministries and their own groups. The grace upon their lives, even some overseers don't have it. Yet they come and you see them quiet. They just sit down. There are people who come here and want to inconvenience everybody to say, I'm around. Who do you think you are? Who sit down there and listen and learn? So that when they rise tomorrow, you don't say it's luck. They love this, my dear people, and honor them. You see me? Give them the right of way to do certain things. And sometimes you are wondering, it's because honor has been proven. When your honor has been proven, the access becomes unlimited. Sometimes there can be something to do. I can just sit back and allow them to be doing it. And sometimes I come and I say, no, 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 let them continue. There is a reason for it. Who knows you and whose track, your, who, who has a testament of your track record? There is nobody that rises from nowhere. You are the Lord of yourself, a boss of yourself. 
I shared with you my story that I played keyboard for Reverend Emmanuel Amethi for many years. Many years. No payment, no nothing. My own keyboard, I will carry it and trek to the hotel and play. The only thing I was ever given was one bottle of Fanta and one cassette. Oh no. When you sow that seed, then there is a grace you must carry. When you sow that seed, there is wealth that you must carry. Are you ready to pray? In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, grant me grace. Whatever pride that needs to be destroyed, is someone praying, in my life and in this season, I have dishonored my parents, spiritually, physically. I have dishonored those who have lifted me academically. I see my lecturers and I push them away. Just because I am now a graduate. I've seen my pastor. And just because I'm now a man of God. I see the pastor that raised me. And I dishonor him. Lift your voice and pray. Someone pray. He that honors me I will honor. He that dishonors me I will esteem. Are you praying? Listen. Listen. You are really going to pray from the pure heart and say, Lord, the eyes to see who is worthy of my honor and the unashamedness to communicate that honor, I receive the grace. Lift up your voice and pray. Your neighbor is a wealthy man. But you believe you are all neighbors. You have a relative that has never been out of job. And yet you have been looking for a job for decades. And you have not seen a need to honor that grace. Pray. You are trusting God to get married. Yet you insult every married person. Insult the wife. Insult the husband. Insult the children. And you want the same blessing. Cannot work that way. You want a flourishing ministry. And you castigate everyone that God has helped. Koinonia, are you praying? Outside, pray. Those online, pray. It's a secret. It's an ordinance. It's a system in the kingdom. The principles that are supposed to lift you, you dishonor them left, right, and center. Yet you want the same results. No, sir. Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace. It's a season of extraordinary fruitfulness. Within these seven days, grace, grace. I may look weak. I may look cheap. But let the blessings of honor distinguish me. Sharabagadabalash. Embrekateparakato shabredekadesh. Rakataparato sedeba shebalahus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I like you in your mind where you are. The five or ten people you know in your life that have paid attention to you and have truly communicated honor. Listen. Not those you want to honor. Those who have honored you and have said, Sam, I respect you. I honor you. You know anybody that has made you a big Lift your voice and bless them and pray for them from your heart. Lift your voice and bless them. If it's the people in your department, bless them. If it's the people in your life, bless them. Lord, you must lift my brother. Lord, you must lift my sister. They have honored me. They have discerned the grace of God upon my life. They have invested in my grace. 
Is someone praying? Shali sabaranda kapo shabrigedes. Ekete palakata bragado sedekeshia. Hallelujah. The last prayer point and then we round up. This house you see is a buffet of graces, dimensions and possibilities. There are dimensions that you have seen in this house that you have not yet seen in your life. You have seen marriages that work and your own marriage is nose diving. You can tap into that grace. You have seen the grace of God you have seen different levels where you are now. You are going to provoke the dimension that is set in your life and say, Lord, genuine honor. To genuine honor. Honor, sincere honor from the depth of my heart. I enter this possibility. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I have seen amazing men and women of God in this ministry. They may not know me, but Lord, I honor them from the secret place. Lord, I have seen great children in this ministry. I honor them with all my heart. I have seen the elderly ones in this ministry. I honor them with all my heart. Habarusa sikete balarabash. Manta prakatoja leketos. Please pray. Saleka paruga sadabash. Rakata bakata pranegete balalakatos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add the last prayer point. The Holy Spirit is just ministering to me. Father, any door that is unclosed by the mercy of God, reopen it for me. Lift your voice. Pray passionately. Pray passionately. Lord, I would have been working in the oil company right now. This honor closed the door. By your mercy, open it again. Open it again. Open it again. Open it again, oh God. There are dimensions of the healing grace. That would have been at work in my life. This honor closed it. Reopen those fountains, so God, in the name of Jesus. There are dimensions of wealth that would have been at work in my life. Reopen it, oh God. There are dimensions of influence and speed. There are dimensions of your presence, signs and wonders. There are dimensions of the revelatory grace. Reopen it, oh God. Reopen it, oh God. Reopen it. It closed over my father. It closed over my mother. It closed over my siblings. But I come, oh God, representing my family. Reopen the ancient doors. Reopen the ancient mantle. My father was once a man of God. Now nobody serves God in my family. Reopen the doors, oh God. My mother was a prosperous woman. Now they live from hand to mouth. What close the door to that door? Reopen it, oh God. I want you to see visions. Now I no longer see. I want you to be the friend of everybody. Now everybody hates me. Reopen the door of honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name above all names, I declare every door that did not close in your life by the mercies of God, I command that door open now. I command that door open now. Any man who trivialize your grace, trivialize your wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray 
that God will lift you before them and may they see your, the hand of God upon your life. I pray for you the grace and the humility to both discern and honor graces. Scatter around the body, receive that grace. I declare, may you never be the reason why you destroy any ministry, any church, any fellowship in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. May God multiply those who discern and honor your grace. I say it again. May God multiply those who discern and honor your grace. May this one key, beginning from this night, start turning and changing things in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those worshiping with us for the first time, we love you. We bless you. May the Lord honor you in the name of Jesus. Let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI. To stream Koinonia Live, go to Mixler.com forward slash Koinonia hyphen radio. And download the teachings on koinoniasermons.org. For questions and inquiries, call 0814-721-4444 or 0907 777 We love and celebrate.